Hi folks, well things are just getting more and more exciting here on the van build. I am just buzzing. I think it could be the weather, the fact that I'm not working anymore, my energy levels are going up and things just seem to be starting to move ahead a lot faster. You saw the window go in last week and I gave you a quick glimpse of the electrics. Now, true to my word, I will look at the electrics with you again in this video, but because this weather's so beautiful, we are going to be getting on with fitting these onto the sides of the van. This one for the electric hookup is going to be going somewhere down here because all the electrics are happening on the other side of this wall. And the one for filling the water tank, it's going to go somewhere here on the opposite side so we don't have to get through all the electrics. And this way it's gonna be just out of the way of Ella's bed and there's plenty of room for it. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Adrian, single father to 13 year old twins, John and Ella. Hi. Our journey began in Thailand, where I used to work as an underwater cameraman and that's where I met their mom. Tragically, we lost her during the birth in Bangkok. I later moved back to the UK to be closer to family. Now, nine years later, I'm home educating the kids and planning exciting adventures. I've always known the transformative power of travel and I want my children to experience it while they're still young enough to want to go with their old dad. We converted my trusty work van into a cozy camper van to embark on incredible journeys. Our future plan is to upgrade to a bigger van and make a more permanent home in Europe. Join us on our journey as we explore the world, learn and grow together. But another thing that gets me excited is buying things for the van. John and I have just been up the road to Autogas 2000. We have got a 40 litre gas tank, which is gonna go behind the rear axle in front of the spare tire. Oh, put it down, it's very heavy. We are so fortunate that Autogas 2000 that supply and fit gas tanks for most of the motorhomes and camper vans in the UK, are in our hometown. As exciting as that is, we're not fitting that tank in this video. That's for one in the future. I'm just waiting for John to come down and then we're gonna start looking at the, getting these two inlets in on the side of the van. All right, John's on his way. He just got a bit sidetracked by the kitchen. That's perfectly normal. He's a 14 year old boy. What we're gonna do is the same as what we did on Sally's van. If you remember those vents we put on the roof, I've got a scrap bit of plywood here. I am going to cut off some lumps that are more or less the same size. We will then drill out some holes with the hole saw in those we will also then go and drill out holes in the side of the van where we want them and again we've got the problem of the hole saw size it's oh it's like a millimeter too small so there won't be just a nice size up from this that will work the next size up we've got is huge so i think we'll go with the smaller one and then luckily because i bought this for sally's van uh, i've got the drum sanders to go on my drill and we can just work at the holes and make them a little bit bigger as we need these are not perfectly round anyway so we only need to take it out a little bit at the top and the bottom and we'll get them to fit okay i will get this cut in half and then we're going to get john a bit hands-on with the tools He's here. Right, I'm gonna make the first hole and then you're gonna have a go, aren't you? Yes. Yes, excellent. So I've set this up with clamps to make it very, very safe because these things can get a bit, you know, overzealous, a bit out of control sometimes. So that's very, very safe. So I'll quickly do this one. John, are you watching? Right on the cross, yeah? Mm -hmm. Position, slow, yeah? Mm -hmm. See it's going in? Mm -hmm. Right, the piece of wood underneath is sacrificial. Yeah? Mm-hmm. If I push too hard, it wants to go boom, like that, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, just gently. Well, can you see what I'm doing? Round and round a little bit, like that. Yeah. And that's it. Oh. Right. Now get both hands on the drill so you're not in the line of fire. That's it. Don't put too much pressure because it will bite you. There, like that. Pull it back up, pull it back up a bit. Put it in reverse. Okay. Click that across, put it in reverse. Come back out. Now, put it back in forward and go again. This time don't stop. Don't push down really up there. That's it, that's it. 
Oh, stopped. Come back out again. All right, I'll keep my hand on this table. Okay. Fast gone. Full speed. <laughs> Remember the rotation, wiggling around and around in a circle. Slowly, big circle. Bigger and slower. Power, power. I think that's it. Put it in reverse. Hey, hey! You made a hole. Yeah. So well done, buddy. Each off with that. Yes, it's cool. Now then, like I said, these are just a little tiny bit too small, so we'll get these drum sanders to it and just hollow them out a little bit. Point it straight in or are you doing it sideways? That's it. Concentration. Right, I've moved you guys into the shade because you got a bit overheated last week, didn't you? There we go. That's what we want, a nice loose fit so it doesn't fight to get in there and then when we put the screws through, it'll get a good hold. Very loud helicopter, I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Right, we've got two of those, two of those. Now we're gonna mark up on the side walls where they're gonna go. And same process, we'll make a hole with the hole saw and then I will use the same sanding uh, drum or the grinder if it's necessary, just to enlarge it a little bit. Then these things just screw on really quickly. They don't even need any Sikaflex. They've got their own gasket, if I can show you. They have a rubber, like almost like neoprene gasket there, which is the seal. I'll put a bit of Sikaflex on the back of the wood to hold it against the wall, because then also in the future, this will all be sealed up obviously, and so will that. Uh, we won't be able to access it. So if one of these breaks, if something goes wrong with this, I'll be able to unscrew it from the outside, pop it off and just screw a new one straight on and the wood will still be in place. This job's gonna be a lot quicker than I thought. Why can't all jobs go like this? I shouldn't have said that, should I? No. So we're gonna figure out where that needs to go. And first of all, it definitely needs to go where we put some sound deadening on. So the first thing I've got to do is take some of this sound deadening back off. Now, shall I just peel that whole thing off? Tell you what, if I cut it about there, will it come? Now we did this some of this on Sally's van, and if you start peeling it, it tends to just wreck it. Yeah, it's unusable again. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know if that'll really do much back on there. I think it's better than having nothing. And then this one is just getting chucked. Oh, that one came off really well. We need a place to stick this. Come on, find a place where we haven't got any. Where are we missing um, some? Um, the sides, look, the sides here. Your the... forehead. Huh? Your forehead. Really? There we go. You'll have to get your little roller to that later when it warms up with the sun, yeah? Yeah. So it just wants to be below that crease line, as low as we can get it, really. And that's definitely higher than the height of the water tank. We should check that, shouldn't we? We should double check that it's higher than the water tank. Let's go and check. Okay, the water tank's buried behind here and it is ugh, 29 centimeters. So the filler has to be higher than that, of course. Oh, easy. So that notch I can see there is at about 30 centimeters. So if we put that just below the crease line up there, that's uh, just perfect, really. That's absolutely lovely. So I think what we'll do is... Mark that there. Should we do them both at the same time? Do you think that makes sense? Mm, probably, yeah. Okay. Right, question is here. I've just discovered, well, not just discovered, but just looked at, they do a gas one of these. I want to put an outlet for a gas barbecue. Now the lovely people at uh, Autogas 2000, John, if you're watching, good man, 
He suggested putting the outlet for the gas barbecue up on the body rather than a lot of people fit it underneath. It just gets all cacked up and it's not ideal because um, it's actually got a switch in it. When you put the pipe in and twist it, it turns the gas on. That might be better to put there, in which case the electric one would be good to put there. Changing the battery at one. Okay, yeah, I've decided. I'm going to put the gas there. Uh, for the barbecue and outlet and I'm going to put the electric one here. Now, if I decide to go with the gas uh, adapter that's identical to this, it's a bit expensive so I'm undecided yet. If I go with it, it's got to be perfectly level with this to make it look right, of course. So to get these level, I can measure it, but I also thought it might be an opportune moment to take a look at this. Now this is the last goo or last go uh, laser level that was sent to me quite some months ago. I wasn't sure how it would tie in with doing vans because nothing on a van's level. They insisted, as it happens, I'm going to get use out of it today. I actually have been using this at work when I was working and it's absolutely brilliant if I'm honest. It's really, really good compared to the one I have. I've dismissed the one I used to have and this is the only one I'll use now. It is a laser level with a little bracket here that is magnetic. So if I fix this onto here, obviously it's got the screw hole on the bottom to fit it onto a normal tripod, um, but I can screw this on here. And then it's magnetic and will stick to anywhere that's metal, of course. And as you can see, if I turn this on, it's got lasers shooting a level 360, this way 360. Oh, it's flashing because it's not level. And the other way 360. So if I pin it to this wall over here, we're gonna see what it can do. So if I stick it on there and adjust it up and down oh, to check first of all, if it's level. Now, obviously when the van shakes, it moves. I'll try and stay still. Now, when that settles down, I don't know if you can see, but that is perfectly in line with the crease of the van, the crease on the outside, which then in turn means if I drop it down in the height, uh, I, may, I mark up the one for the electric and get the center point ready, and I line it up with this level for that one, I can mark this one up now, and then it's ready to go when I come to fit my gas one. So I'm going to use my wooden backer there. That is where I want it to be. And I'm going to make a hole like that. Oh. And then from there, I can get my center point. Doesn't have to be perfect because a few millimeters left, right, up, down doesn't really make much difference. But if that's going to be my center point for that, that means you can see that laser is just towards the top of that little point there, which means I can wait for it to settle over here. Got it. So there we go. Absolutely fantastic little piece of kit. It's got a USB-C port so you can recharge it. And uh, I've used it a lot at work before I finished and uh, it did me proud. It's really, really good. Like I say, I stopped using my other one that I already had and that's the only one I'll use now. So obviously there'll be a link in the description if you're interested in it. And uh, yeah, let's get back to making holes in the van, shall we? Right, I've made a little pilot hole. I'm just going to enlarge it a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to take the whole saw to the outside and make a hole. Oh no, I'll tell you what, let's do them both at the same time. I'll pilot that hole as well. I think this drill bit's getting blunt. Right, to the outside. Let's go, Batman. Okay, making holes in vans, everyone's favorite. <clears throat> What? 
What have I hit? Oh, nothing. Hole number two. Oh. Oh, that's it. <sighs> Crikey, that was quick. Right, mister. Do you want to deburr that hole while I go and enlarge the other one? Yes. So of course we've hammer it around these uh, around the bare metal to stop it from corroding. But I forgot to drill the holes for the screws, didn't I? So we're going to do that now. And this is where we encountered a microphone problem. I'll tell you more about that later, but for now, as you can see, I'm using some OB1 to get this stuck on the wall. And so it's there for the future if I ever need it. And these things fit in absolutely perfectly. And then we're just gonna screw them into the wood. I'll tell you what, shall I put some music on? Yeah, let's have some music instead of me waffling, hey? Hello. It's quite a few days down the line now since you last saw us. We've been having some microphone issues you might have noticed. Now it wasn't our fault like it usually is. The camera took a little tumble the other day and it's damaged the microphone jack point. Now we've actually managed to plug it, plug it in through the headphone socket and it seems to be working. So fingers crossed that this sounds as good as it normally does. We have had some deliveries in the meantime and I'm excited to get them on. So those inlets you saw us installing, I'm going to give you another closer look at those because we did do a grand tour at the end of the video last time, um, but it had no sound. So we'll redo that. We have had a Truma boiler delivered. I'll tell you more about that when it comes to fitting it, but of course that's going to need the flu vent fitting. And we have had two Bullfinch uh, fittings inlets. This one is for a gas barbecue and this one is for an outside shower. Now, the reason I've gone with these bullfinch ones is because they quite simply, it's permanently connected and on. All you do is you pop this in there, give it a twist, oh, I'm going the wrong way. That way, twist, and it turns it on. And then you can use this as an outside little shower, wash your, sh wash your shoes, whatever you want to do, twist, and it turns it off and you unplug it and that goes back down. So. These are a fantastic little addition. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all three of these things fit into the side of the van and I'm just gonna show you at the end. You don't need to see the whole process of us fitting those again. And then I will show you the electrics because we've already filmed it, but it had no sound. So we're gonna do it again. What was that? Oh, and when I'm doing that, John is gonna get on and clean up the workshop because it's a right mess. Aren't you, dude? Yes, I am. All right, now I wasn't going to film this, but I'll just show you. We've got a few little holes, but I thought it was worth filming because look, we've got someone helping out with the painting. Hi. Ella has come to join the gang and she's getting some hammerite around these freshly cut holes. How are you doing, Elle? Good, I think, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, we're all done. And as promised, I'm gonna give you a bit of a closer look at these things. We did show you this already, but I can't remember if that footage had a working microphone or not. So anyway, this is our lovely water inlet. It's got a, a lock uh, cap there, so I can undo that with the key, pop it out, fill with water. This is our snazzy new Bullfinch hose. So all you do is you pop this in here, give it a twist, and you've got water. Obviously not yet because nothing is connected on the inside. Twist it, turns it off, unplugs, close it down. And then of course this 
is the, uh, the air vent for the Truma boiler, which again is not installed as yet, but we just wanted to get all this stuff in and ready. And then on this side, we've got another bullfinch, but this one is a gas connection. So it's the same thing. You open this up, pop that in, give it a little press and a turn. That will turn the gas on and we'll be able to hook up gas barbecue. Fantastic. And then of course, that is the power inlet over there, which you've seen several times now, and I can't remember how many times we filmed it. Uh, so yeah, fantastic. And so these are the backs, of course. That is for the boiler. That is a hot and cold supply for that water outlet. So we'll see how that works out. Obviously the inlet for the water. And then over here, we've got the gas. I'll need to get a connection on there. And the electricity. Not doing very much right now, but uh, they will at some point. Now, before we finish this video, I promised you guys I was gonna show you around the electrics. Now, believe it or not, I actually know what's going on here. It looks like chaos, but it's organized chaos. I've had to put a few holes through the bodywork of the van here in order to get some of these, uh, this conduit in so I can thread the wires through. These ones need fixing up there. They will be more tidy once we start coming to put the insulation in. Um, but basically, this most of this is our 12 volt system. This is lighting cables and this is the socket cables for like uh, USBs. This is gonna go to fans and things like that. Um, it all goes down here to the bottom where there's gonna be all sorts of things going on here on my main uh, instrument panel. We're gonna have the DC to DC charger to charge from the battery. We're gonna have the MPPT charger to ch charge from the solar. There'll be a massive inverter. There's a servo, uh, all sorts of things. And uh, this will all wire into that later. But for now, if we follow these wires, you can see they are heading up. Some of them are going across the ceiling and they're coming down the other side and they are all labeled at both ends saying what they are. So when it pops out down at the other end, it's got labels on it as well. And they're running down through the bodywork here. They're coming across the ceiling up here and they're going down and along and we've got stuff for everything. We've got a fan for in the bathroom. We've got the lights for in the bathroom, USB sockets inside a cupboard, which is gonna be the charging station for like the cameras and the drone and things like that. We've got under cabinet lighting here, the Max Air fan. We might buy the surround that has a light on it so that we've put a wire there for the Max light. I'm planning on putting a light inside. We're putting extra USB ports inside that cupboard. All the control panels are gonna go on the end of a cabinet that will be here. So we'll have a, the Victron controller, the Truma one, we'll have water readouts for how much water's in the waste tank, how much water's in the freshwater tank. I've still got a few more cables to come for that. We're gonna have the main light switch here, I think, as well. Oh no, what was this light switch, John? Ah, oh, this was the barbecue light switch, because we're gonna have a light switch over there, over the barbecue, sorry, a light. Uh, and the switch for the other light will be over there. We've got wires for the cooker, for the fridge. We're gonna have a 12 volt socket there and we'll have a 240 volt socket there running from the inverter. There's loads going on here. Okay, folks, we're getting close to sign off, but I just wanted to run a few things by you. First of all, I want to talk to you about reviews. Obviously, in this video, we have reviewed this little gadget, which I will honestly say is fantastic. I've thrown away my old one. And even though I'm not gonna be in the building trade anymore, this is coming with me. I don't wanna be without it. If you're interested in it, 10% discount in the description below. Now, obviously, we are getting more and more requests for reviews on the channel, because the channel's growing. I am accepting a few because they're gonna be very helpful for the van. We've got like a new stereo coming, we've got dash cam, we've got a sat nav, uh, we've even got an e-bike on its way at some point soon. Now I was just curious, would you guys prefer to have separate little videos reviewing things? I think for things like the e-bike, we are gonna do a separate review anyway. It's gonna be a standalone video and maybe we'll release that midweek and we don't count that as part of our normal vlog. Or are you happy for little reviews like this one to just pop into the video? We do this for you. Uh, we do it for ourselves as well, of course, but we couldn't do it without you. And we care what you think and the way you want the videos to go. So please let us know. These won't continue for a long, like forever. This is just where we're building the van. We're getting components and help from companies and we will review them as we see fit. So uh, let us know. But otherwise, next week, John is gonna be looking at insulation, aren't you, bud? Yep. He's gonna be looking at getting some of the insulation in. Well, I might be messing on with the gas tank, we think. 
I'm not sure because we haven't filmed it yet and I keep changing my mind about the job I'm going to work on. I, it's just whatever I feel like on the day. <laughs> I was going to do the gas tank today, but then those uh, parts arrived to go on the sidewalls. So anyway, there we go. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button. That helps us out loads and loads and loads. And you can jump over to Patreon if you want to get any information uh, before the YouTube videos come out. I keep putting little videos on there all the time of everything that's been happening. Um, but all that's left to say is goodbye. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.